What's up, guys? What's going on? I'm Paul. This is Pauline Theology's Daily Devotional, and we're continuing on our study through John. We have uh, talked a lot here recently on who Jesus is, his relationship with the Father, and uh, it's been pretty deep. So I hope that um, we have been understanding a little bit in, more intimately about who Jesus is. And we're going to continue on that study now as we uh, begin to talk about the witnesses that testify to who Jesus is. And this is important as well, man. It's pretty cool because we get to see a little bit of the nature of the Trinity in respect or regards to the Father and the Son. And so uh, it's cool to see this intimacy between the two that um, is uniquely displayed as we read through the chapter five of John. So if you haven't read it yet, go ahead and check out chapter five, verses 30 through 40. Stop the tape, read it, see what it has to say, come back, and we'll discuss the four questions. If you've already read it, then uh, we're going to go ahead and dive in, man. So what is John 30 through uh, 40 saying? Well, he reiterates again the judgment that he has. Jesus says that he has this judgment. Now, at first he was referring to himself as the son. And now he makes emphatically clear the one in whom he's talking about. He says, I. And again, uh, talking about the usage of the verbs versus the pronouns in Greek language. And he uses the pronoun as well. So he emphatically states this as I. I. So uh, when he starts out saying that it is the son um, a son of God or son of man. And now he shows that this one who he's talking about that has equality with God because everything that the father does, he does that, uh, everything and he does it perfectly and that he is still, um, not transcending or replacing God because he is continually submissive to the father. Well, he's saying that is him. That is him. And this judgment that he is judging with, this this uh, uh, authority is righteous and it's perfect. And it's because, again, he reiterates the fact that it is not his will, but his father's will. And we read a couple of episodes ago, though, that um, though it is his father's will, it is also his will because or he has an autonomous will. And so if he desired to do something else, he could. But it's unthinkable because Jesus's desires are totally aligned with the father's. And so everything that he does displays, honors and glorifies the father. And now he begins to speak about the witnesses that testify about himself. He says he can't testify about himself because it wouldn't be true or it wouldn't be valid or um, it, it, it wouldn't be. Uh, I can't think of that other word that uh, uh, I'd read about the usage for. But the sense is that from the Old Testament in the scriptures, it says that there has to be two or more witnesses to confirm. And so he's saying in himself, if it was his witness, then it wouldn't be enough. It wouldn't be enough to confirm the things that he says are true. But at the same time, at the same time, he's also saying because it's not even his witness, the witness that he is or, or the things that he does is not even his witness because he doesn't do his own will. Yet he does the will of the father. So that's why that the, 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 the witness that he has is not valid or is true. He says, but there is another who testifies to him or is a witness to him. And he says he knows that one is true. And that one we assume or know or understand to be the father. And he'll make that explicit later. But what are these four witnesses? Well, the first is John. He says he doesn't accept John's witness because it is the witness of man. And we read a little bit earlier about how his uh, how man's witness is, is of the earth, that um, they don't see or understand the things of heaven as clearly perceived as the sun. Yet he is going to make this a valid one for himself, for others. And what I mean by this is that he says the reason that he's stating John is because he wants to 
give them salvation. He wants them to, uh, because that uh, um, the, the thing and the fact about John being a witness is something that they attested to, that they saw. And they, they loved his light for a moment. And so he says, man, if you saw John and you attest to him as being a prophet, like why don't why don't why don't you believe him? The second witness, he says, is greater. He says, yeah, John was a witness and you loved his life for an hour. He says, but there's a greater witness than that. And he says, that's the works that his father has given him to do. And so everything that he does, because he is perfectly at line, his will to the fathers testifies to who he is. And we see many signs and wonders that he he's going to do. We've seen him heal the lame. We've seen him uh, heal the sick. We've seen him uh, turn water into wine and we're going to see him raise the dead. And then we are going to see him be crucified. But then raised to life. Ultimately, his resurrection is going to show that the things that he has been doing and saying are absolutely true. And then align with this concept of the works that he does is that he represents the father. The father testifies to this. Now, we could look at other passages in other uh, scriptures and other um, um, testaments, not testaments, I'm sorry, in other gospels that say uh, the, the, the uh, voice of God came out of heaven on a couple of occasions that said, this is my son. So it could be that testimony. And that would be John uh, allowing his readers the uh, the the saying that they have read these other um, according uh, uh, these other um, recordings of the gospel, maybe having understanding that they have done that. But if we were to stick strictly to what it says here, uh, what's in his gospel, we're unsure as to what it is, except I think that. Because of what he said, the works that testify to him is to say that everything that he does, the father is in agreement with. And because of that agreement of the father and the son, then that is a testimony to who Jesus is, that the father is agreeing with the son. But it's because the son is doing everything that the father is, is saying he would do. And that's in the end, again, the resurrection is a work. That is a picture of God saying everything that the son has said is true. And then there he says that this thing about him, that they neither heard his voice, seen his form. And that they don't even have the word remaining in him. Remember, we talked about how remaining was an important uh, uh, word that. Jesus remained with the people in Samaria that uh, the, the, the first disciples wanted to stay or remain, find out where Jesus was staying or remaining, residing. Because they wanted to be with Jesus. But these, the, the Pharisees, the Jews, the ruling elite. They have no they have no desire for that. His word is not remaining in him. And the evidence of that is because they do not believe. Now, he he kind of piggybacks off that because the next witness is the scriptures. It says that they look deep into these scriptures. They seek and search. Um, the word that 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 is used is uh, one that it's like an examination. It's like uh, strict studying. And the word is also used to um, probably connotate a person that is a rabbi who does this as his um, living, not live, but like this is his thing. This is his goal is to attest and ascribe the, the goodness of the scriptures. And so it says they search these scriptures because they think that it will give them life. And it says that very scriptures that they search are about him, yet they don't see him. They look past him. 
It says, because they do not come to him to have life. Man, don't let that happen to you, man. Don't be so, so enthralled or what do they say? The force for the trees, man. Man, come to Jesus. So what does it say about God? Well, it says that Jesus is revealed in the scriptures. That's an important fact to know that the Old Testament, a lot of people want to separate the two. They'd be like, well, why is God so different in the Old Testament than he is in the New Testament? When that is not true, because it is the same God of the old as it is of the new, because what it is is describing and talking about Jesus. And the reason I think and I believe that John alludes to this a lot of times and Jesus says these things of himself um, about how the scriptures testify to him. But he never gives an exact scripture. And I believe that's because it is the, the preponderance of it or the theme, the idea behind driving all of these scriptures, the new and the old, is Jesus. Jesus is the one whom they testify to. They make a witness to. And uh, Luke alludes to that when he says that Jesus opened up or began to talk about all of the scriptures that described him to those guys on the road to Emmaus. The scriptures are about Jesus. And so because they are about him, then this goes to us as men that we should follow him we should believe in him because if the scriptures are about him they testify to what he's doing and what he's done just think about that the the love that he has for us the salvation that he gives to us the hope that he brings to us we must believe those things we can't look past them we have to see jesus in them And so secondly, it also gives a a kind of a hermeneutic to understand scripture. By all means, I do not want to say that every time you read something that you should be like, that's about Jesus. That's about Jesus. But we have to have that underlying theme and understanding that these scriptures are speaking towards what he is doing, how he is doing it. That is salvation. That is grace. That is justice. That is mercy. All of those things are embodied in the person of Jesus because they are him. And if you have more questions about that, because I know that's a very difficult understanding sometimes to think. Is this saying it's about Jesus specifically or is this just an illusion or testimony to how Jesus works in our lives? And then and then finally, how do we or actually, I'm sorry is that another thing is that I think we should testify as John has testified. Though Jesus doesn't need our testimony, he desires it so that we might be saved. He names it and claims it on the fact because it is a way in which we can reach others for the salvation that comes through Jesus alone. So how do we apply these truths to our lives? That's the question. Well, I think we should contemplate on the identity of Jesus. Who is Jesus? Who is he? And what has he done? Because as we study and understand who he is, we trust him more because we know more about him. And not to say these things are easy to understand or contemplate, but it's something that we should do. Because for me, it brings joy infinitely. And so I hope it does the same for you. But then secondly, man, we should be imitating Jesus as a witness to who he is. But I think we're going to be more like John, obviously, because John could not perfectly testify to him, but he did the job that was given to him. And so though we as Christians will never perfectly testify to the person of Jesus, and that's why it says man's glory he doesn't need. But he wants it because it helps others to find salvation in him. And so the job or the task that God has sent us to do. Let us do it. Let us testify. So find somebody. You know, when I say that, somebody pops up in your head instantly. Who needs to know Jesus and tell him to come to Jesus. Just send him to Jesus. And he'll testify concerning himself. 
Hey, I appreciate you guys for listening, and I will see you in the next episode.